Rucika mengalirkan kehidupan hadirkan kebahagiaan memberikan rasa aman wujudkan kualitas hidup yang lebih baik ciptakan harmoni untuk menjaga kebahagiaan keluarga Indonesia kini dan nanti Rucika lebih dari 45 tahun menjadi solusi total sistem perpipaan terdepan Rucika di mana air mengalir sampai jauh Good morning PQM friends It is a really a great pleasure for us to welcome you to our webinar today I hope all of you stay safe and healthy. Since the pandemic, PQM Consultants has been switching from offline into online services, including running webinars. But this time, this webinar is our first webinar with international speaker. This free and invitation on the webinar is made possible by our sponsors Wahana Duta Jaya Ruchika known as Ruchika and Danon specialized nutrition uh, known as Danon uh, we appreciate very much these companies to support us during even during this difficult time for those who are not fam fam <coughs> not familiar with us yet, I would like to briefly introduce PQM Consultants. We are founded almost 33 years ago. As our name implies, we are helping our clients to improve their productivity and quality. In short, we are focusing ourselves uh, in enhancing competitiveness of our clients' organizations by doing improvement through people. That's our tagline. Let me introduce myself. I am Sony Irawan, and I will be the moderator for the entire webinar this morning. Our agenda today, after opening, we will start with presentation by Susaki Sang, about 25 minutes, followed by 15 minutes question and answer, and then Susaki Sang will continue with his presentation, and then followed again with another 15 minutes questions and answer. Dear PQM friends, we are so proud to have our webinar leader, Kiyoshi Susaki, to share his vast knowledge and experiences on gaining insight to better utilize people's talent for post-COVID-19. As you might already know from our, from our uh, brochures, our seminar leader, Susaki Zhang, is author of three books in English. The New Manufacturing Challenge, and the New Shop Floor Management, and the last is Results from the Heart. Uh, in fact, we have translated his first book already in Bahasa Indonesia. Besides the books in English, he has he is he co-authored also uh, a book in in French as well as uh, video training programs in English. So let's, let, let me introduce about him. Born in Japan, he received his bachelor from Waseda University and MBA from Stanford University. He worked at Toshiba prior to move to the US. He also worked with Boston Consulting Group and Ernst and Young uh, as a principal consultant before he started his own 
consulting company Susaki and Co. PQM Consultants knows him since the early days of PQM. We invited him to our offline at the time, international seminars in those days. In the past, he has done also some project with Indonesian company, companies such as Jarum, Polytron, Fuji Camera, etc. Today, Susaki Zhang will share this webinar from New Zealand where he currently resides. So in case you have any questions during uh, question and answer, please write your questions in the Q&A feature below in your screen. Uh, you can write during as well as after his presentation. So, without further ado, I will hand it over to Kyo, as I call him, and please help me welcome Kyo-san. Thank you. Could you put the video on? It says you can't start your video because the host has stopped it. Video is on from our side. Okay, I see that. Ah, yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm 72 now, and when I met Sony, it was about 30 years ago. <laughs> Time has changed. Yes. And I cannot imagine that we are doing this if I, I were in that situation projecting forward. And we have this webinar. I'm in New Zealand. I've traveled around the world, did so many things. And it's such a funny moment that we are doing it. But I'm very happy for it because in April, I think I had a time to meet some of uh, Sony's friends. And through that, we started this conversation and decided to do this. And the first thing I want to talk about is about my personal journey. But before that, I first want to uh, thank you for everyone to join me and to share some thoughts. You know, everybody's got different background, different language, the values and all that. But if we can jointly figure out the way to communicate, we can enrich our experience. And I hope I'll do that. So let me go into the first slide, please. I don't know if I can see it. So my background, it says a lot from the nuclear, actually I was involved in the Fukushima safety analysis, if you can believe it. But went to business and interested in Zen and human behavior. I was at the shop floor, the strategy, also private equity firm for mergers and acquisitions. I was a curious person from early on and I didn't know what to do. So if I reflect back my life from Toshiba in Japan in nuclear, to Boston Consulting and my business and so on and so forth, even to the private equity. It looks like the journey that uh, opened up as I tried to figure out what's the next step. So the process that we go through as individuals, I see it's very much similar to what the company should go through because the company's organization, you know, composed of the people and the people need to change and the company to change. So the alignment of the company and the people has to have some kind of a balance or connection that makes sense. So as much as from the point of view of individual to go through the challenge and ex excel in whatever we, we can do and move forward, collectively we have to accomplish the same thing. So we cannot just talk about the corporate strategy and the, what to do from the top without engaging people. So if you go through this idea of the lean production, for example, you need to have people engaged from the shop floor. You know, that's how you can add value from the top and the bottom and connect and reduce the inventory so that uh, you communicate better. If you have more inventory, you have less communication. But if we are not careful, each organization become very independent and they speak their language. So we need to find a way to communicate. 
So the lean idea would address it in one, one way from the production and material point of view, but also information point of view. But managerially, we need to have some kind of a structure to make this thing happen. So waste elimination connects to the appreciation of the human potential, and that connects to the, you know, everyone to find their destiny in crisis. That's why I call this seminar as the you know, find a destiny in crisis. And then reflecting back, that's what I went through, reinventing myself all the way. In the process, I asked lots of questions. Why do we do what we do? That's one of the main questions that I ask. Because at the end, it requires lots of challenge to ourselves because of the habitual pattern and whatever learned may not work in future. So that's the challenge we have to go through. And I want to talk about the personal issues later, perhaps more in the second part. But first, talk about the managerial part and the company situation first. Next slide, please. Um, one common theme and idea you may have is the idea of a plan to check act, PDCA. I often say CAPD because you cannot plan without checking. So CAPD sounds like the right thing to do. You have to know where you are, what's going on, and figure out what can be done better. So you approach in one direction and figure out where you are and then go to the next direction, developing another strategy and moving forward. Personally, I have gone through this from one job to the next job, from Japan to the US, from the US to Europe and others and also enrich my experience by having exposed to many different countries and ways of doing business, can kind of confirm my own basic uh, core value or way of approaching business as well as aligned to that is my life. And I think in this world, when things are changing, that's what everyone needs to do. You know, company may be looking at the people more like a tools, but uh, you know, that's not fair for the people. You know, what we are seeing is the wealth gap from those who has and who has not. My view is that we need to incorporate people and the lean is to take the waste out and more enrichment of the people. And we need to have a good management system to accomplish that. But basically follow through this PDC cycle to have the rhythm deciding what to do and have a harmonious relationship with people in the board, in this case, or the company, and then develop the plan, execute, and check what's happened, and then keep on going. Everybody need to do that. Let's move on to the next slide, please. Traditionally, however, we have been, I have been seeing this kind of picture. On the left is the traditional organization. On the right is more of a progressive organization. And the top-down scheme is very often utilized, authoritative approach, which the top management say, do as I say, and people may just listen to what's happening and just tell me what to do. Early on, when decided to move from Japan to the US, there's an important incident that happened that kind of changed my fate. That was when I read the book called In Search of Excellence, and in there, I saw a line. I read something like, uh, there was a person from GM who got laid out, laid off. And he was saying to Tom Peters, saying that I've been working in this country company for 15 years, but in that 15 years, I've never been asked one single question. And business-wise, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in a human, you know, perspective wise. If your kids are growing, you want to feed them and let them grow, you need to create environment. It's high, I'm not sorry to say, you know, comparing the kids to the shop floor people, but if the structure is such that I have a power, you do what I say, it just doesn't make sense. So I found the reason to move out of Japan to the States to figure out what I can do. I feel like I went, you know, parachute down to the desert and not knowing where to go. But I figured out the way because I had the passion and energy and the dream that I wanted to do. So going through the crisis, I think, 
we need to figure out what to do. You know, before I figured this out, I had some doubt of what I can do. I remember going to the temple, and there was a little, not the little one, actually a big base, and there was a one goldfish, you know, swimming. And I feel like I'm that goldfish. You know, I'm in this environment, but I don't know what to do. Then this idea popped up. So I figured out it's not conventional to lead the company, but I left the company and figured out what to do. So that's the kind of a uh, crisis. It may be required. You have nowhere to go. Well, in the case of lean, you reduce inventory. So you have to figure out what to do. The same thing happens in the corona or the COVID-19 that you have to figure out what to do. So that is the challenge to the conventional wisdom and figure out what to do. So generally speaking, my view of the organization change is that we have to enrich the environment for people to participate and let them have the ownership that also comes with accountability. So that the, it says so, can we manage without managing? That's the ideal situation. But if people develop the skill of self-management, that's what's gonna happen. And the top guy can open up their time because people are helping and improving, therefore they can think about the future and the next challenge and so forth. Even further, if I mention about the mini company idea, if each individual feel like the owner of his mini company and their customers, suppliers, bankers, employees, and he is to be managing that environment, and if you do that, you may come to the point that, okay, I'll have to talk with this guy. What about this idea? Let's go out and talk to that guy. So within the organization, he may expand his exploration to make the mini company better. Or he may go outside of the company because he can maybe borrow some idea. Or maybe he may find another idea of selling the product he's making to the customer somewhere else. So the challenge is not only for the top, but the people at the lower part of the organization. That's what I see. And on the right is what I see. The top is thinking of, what can I do for you? What's your problem? Can I help? The people are creating the suggestions, the plans, and whatever he wants to do. Okay, there's a suggestion program or QC pro, uh, quality circle and so forth in the past but I want them to be the businessman and they can handle it because they have the business to run in their family. So that's the kind of a potential that we want to reach out. And let me go to the next slide, please. In this slide, what I'm saying is that hierarchical control is not profitable and the hierarchical decision making is too slow and the hierarchical information is cumbersome. So management is not so much of analyzing and telling what to do. Well, some of them, you have to do that, but let people to take that part of the uh, management skill so that management is more about, the, not so much about control, but about making sense of the chaos. Next slide, please. Okay. Here, what I'm saying is that people get crossfired. If you just think about the case of him, not so much of a mini company without ownership, he may be uh, thrown into the meeting about the production cost or cost of uh, service, whatever that may be, or he may be thrown into the case of the quality, product defect or customer complaint, or he may be thrown, thrown into the case of the delivery issues in a different meeting. So if he doesn't have the ownership, he could be pulled in you know, right and left and all different ways by different staff members and people telling them what to do. And that's not healthy. And that's not the right way of managing, in my view. The people should be managing his own mini company. And it's not easy at the beginning, but he can teach those others, okay, you tell me about this inventory problem or you tell me about the quality problem. But my KPI, key performance indicators are this and this, and green and red is like this, and therefore my focus should be this way, and this is aligned to the focus for the 
top management because the company need emphasis on this area or whatever. So he, with the ownership he's got and his view of the mission of, of this department or section of a unit and becoming customer oriented and create the objectives, KPIs and develop plans and go through PDCA. That's what they should be doing. Next slide, please. So I want to, and actually I have asked this question all over, wherever I go. <laughs> and to the point that the, uh, it's a funny story, but it's important to get to know me or get to know ourselves because in our life, we have lots of people having ownership of how they live. And I asked the question, well, tell me what's going on, what's so interesting, what's your vision and how you do it. So that's the approach of me to kind of find out the people's creativity. And there are lots of uh, interesting stories to come with it, not within the company, but outside of the company. As much as those things happen in our life, any place in the world, I mean, sometimes it may not be the case and maybe I don't have many questions to ask, but I try to ask the question saying that, what's your vision? What you get stimulated? How you approach it? You know, that's the same thing about the bank cards should ask to the mini company. What is your mission? Who are the customers? What are the KPIs, the objectives? How are you approaching it? And how can you show me, you know, what is the reason of your existence? And that may be a little bit strong statement, but basically asking, tell me how you feel good about what you do. And if you can answer that question logically with some kind of examples and data, but I just don't want to focus on the brain part because we are dealing with the people and therefore I want to talk about their heart or desire, the emotion. You know, what is the initiative, the inspiration or the spirit he's got? If I just listen to their PowerPoint presentation, whatever that may be, it doesn't kind of give me a sense of vibrant sense of this guy living. So my orientation is to find life in people and until I find the point, you know, what is this guy interested and in wanting to do, then my job cannot be done. So I visit the companies. What I do is to talk with the top management, usually not too long because they like to give a nice presentation with PowerPoint and stuff like that. And basically, I don't believe so much of it. One thing I learned from Toyota is look at the organization from the shop floor up and see what you see. You know, there are lots of problems that happen. We have to kind of triangulate the assessment, looking from the top, from the middle side of the way, from the bottom and so forth, to make sense of it and figure out where is the bottle, uh, bottleneck, you know, something preventing. There is a blockage in the organization, any organization, and we can find it, and that's part of the top's job. Or collectively, we have to do that. And the idea, like I mentioned about the glass wall management, if you can have the way of representing what's going on in the company when the, with a kind of displays that, that attract people, not just boring stories and the red and green, but more with the little balloons and the comments and smiling and the, you know, some character of what they are proud of. And if I see that, I know that organization is vibrant and having fun. So to me, the spirit initiative is connected us to have fun and that's connected to our being creative in what we do. So that's the idea of the mini company. Conceptually, we can talk about it, but at the end, we need to have the clear logic and you know, reasoning that you can explain. And at the same time, you show the spirit and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. Okay, basics of mini company. If you read through it, you'll find it, it should be common sense. I mean, that's what I see. I've used this slide over 30 years, perhaps. It's a very simple thing. I employed this idea of the mini company when I came to the States and found this company, which was about 150 people. And they are Mexican people, not well-educated. 
But I explained to them the idea of the housekeeping organization and the idea of the PDCA. So they start to post these things and thinks it's not doing right. Often I took pictures and showed it on the wall so that they can see what's broken. And I made a little comment underneath. So that kind of pulled them into what's going on in this company. And I may say, let's keep smiling. And, you know, even if difficulty or a little comment, can we make this area more clean? You know, things of that nature. So the idea is to expose the problem, let them have the ownership and find out the way to practice PDCA. So over time, after maybe two years, I came up with, the, with this idea that person who is the supervisor, I want them to become the plan manager. You know, how can we do that? Let them have the management skill. So I start to ask the question, what's your mission? Let them figure out who are the customers, which com the customers are more important than others. Let them have the arrows going this way and that way. So I can see the universe they operate. And then I ask the question, if the customers are important, how do you describe the objectives? And then have it on the scoreboard to monitor it and have a meeting to discuss about the problems and let them have the skills to solve the problem, share you know, the information and so forth and then plan of action to achieve the objectives. As they go through the PDCA, share the accomplishment and report the progress among themselves to the bankers, I call it, the bosses. And I want them to write annual report. That's like a resume, I said. The company may change, you change, you may want to go this way because, or that way, because the company situation may go down. When the top management is very rigid, and you may not feel good about it. There's, you know, there's opportunity in this company, so you look for opportunities elsewhere. Like my case of the personal journey, I get blocked here and there, and I struggle. <laughs> like the case of this base and the goldfish. And that happens, I don't know, every five years or 10 years. You know, eventually, you listen to your heart and figure out what you really like to do, and if that helps the, you know, the society, that's the kind of direction you want to find your passage because that makes sense, right? You like what you're doing and want to do more. And if that helps the customer, you know, what will be the uh, location or the job or whatever that is available. So you search for that. And you can search the same thing within the company from operation in the area A to B or C or different section, even from human resource to the accounting or the production or customer service. You know, you never know. So in this day and age and going through the crisis, it's very important for the people to think about those feasibility and the flexibility to come with it. Next slide, please. Let me go quickly. Uh, this is just a representation of what I said about the glass wall management. If you go there, situation is easy to understand, even for strangers. And by knowing that and looking at the way and organizing information, you don't have to go through the PDCA. In your uh, operating on this mini company, you are the CEO. You have to use all the tools important to make the situation visible and let people to join, to have a conversation and conduct a meeting. So that's the basic issue. And that picture here just explain, you know, there may be the mission and customer orientation, the chart and the KPIs of the customer survey result, a plan of action, who is doing what and when and where, and how that's connected to the PDCA uh, or QCDSM, the KPIs. On the right, there may be a skill matrix the plan for vacation, the idea of suggestions, award, the project they're working on, cause and effect diagram. So there's lots of like a, I want to call it almost like a kindergarten effect, that there's an enriching environment that people can find in that situation. Next slide, please. So I mentioned about onion report. That represents what you saw in a glass wall in a more concise manner, in an annual report fashion. So you are the president of your mini company. Whether you are the 
a department head or section head or unit head or whatever the case is, even individual can do that. So that is, like I said, the resume. You know, there's a name that you can find your name in there if you like, you know, Suzaki and Company <laughs> or mission statement that you feel strong about. But just a little comment on the mission. Some people may want to just make money, but to me, that's not the mission. The money is just a tool. What do you want to achieve that? So you ask the, these questions to make sure what you can be uh, inspired to do. And unless you have that, the people may not share it, okay? So that's the question about the leadership and so forth, and go through that. And in the annual report, you may have the lessons learned, existing problems, plans of the future. This can be done at the lowest level of the organization. And I have gone through it, and I want you to think about it. And the next slide, this is the final one before we go to the Q&A. Kind of rushing a little bit, but at least capturing the idea, I hope. So all those circles are like a mini companies. Each is going through the PDCA cycle, moving on. And then the bankers above is coordinating. And they have another level of the bankers meeting on the top. So the information is processed upward and decided and it comes downward and going up and down. You know, Hoshin Kanri or you know, anything like that is very similar to that. So the mini company structure perfectly fit with it and the good company should have that. And if, you, if the people are employed, interested in that process, then you have this organization very vibrant with the rhythm, harmony, tone. Down below is the bank arts and mini company connection in the green. And each mini company president becomes the banker for the next level mini company. So how the situation happens there is the whole organization is functioning smoothly. And if there's a problem, we figure out by going through the PDCA, you know, individually and collectively and as a team. So those are the basic idea of the mini company. I'm not sure if I communicate it with you enough, but I think it's time to have a Q&A session. Sony, maybe you can help me on this from here. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the first session, Kyo. Please give an applause from Kyo. <laughs> so we have a few questions here, and I still encourage uh, other people to raise their question. So the first question is from Ritwan Kolbi. He is asking, uh, from Terios, uh, he is asking how we engage people to give suggestion and create a culture to trust shop floor people. Well, that's Can an interesting you... question. Um, there, there are many ways. I'm just trying to figure out that uh, what may be the answer that may stimulate you. Uh, but number one, it's leader's responsibility that you need to feel sense of what they are interested, what, what they have, or what problems are, because engagement comes with their own ideas and they should be, again, the president of their area of responsibility. So there may be some issues, maybe the safety concerns, maybe the housekeeping concerns, maybe skill concerns, you know, as an example. So if you're leading the organization, you should be able to have the eyes to think through the possibility of what they may have. And if they have no suggestion to come, then why don't you have them work together and maybe visit one area and discuss what do you see as the problem here and what do you think can be an answer for that? Let's say you do it collectively so people may start to engage themselves and bounce around the idea. You know, off the top of my head, that's that one idea I talked up. Okay, there may be a bunch of other ways, but instead of going and thinking on my own, you are the one to lead the people. 
just like other blockages. One of your blockage here is your psychological blockage that something is not happening. You are the goldfish in the vase and you don't know what to do. So put yourself in their shoes if it doesn't work. Or ask them you know, why you cannot come up with the idea. And you say, what about this? What about that? And once you started that, then you have this meeting to share. Okay, this guy came up with this idea. Why don't you explain to them the rest of it? What was the idea and how did you come up with it? You know, something like that. You can use this okay. same concept at the top, right? Because the top guy is asking for the participation of management and you may not be able to stimulate some of the area that it needs, you know, some improvement idea, the project. So orchestration of this nature happens within the lower level organization, middle level and the top level, whether you call it the suggestion or business plan or strategy, it's the same. Each is its own PDCA cycle. And once you get developing the idea of the suggestion, you may be good at challenging a more difficult one, maybe more of the cross-functional one. And then you start to orchestrate much bigger problems. So each of the steps is the growth of the individual. That's the way I see it. Okay, thank you, Kyo. Uh, so we come to the next question. It is from Terry uh, Danon. Danon is uh, one of our sponsors. He is asking... Uh, <coughs> uh, Starting, sorry, sorry. Starting sometimes it is easier than make it sustained. For example, making the data on meeting point wall, how to make sustain and due to many data have to be updated daily, even <laughs> shiftly. Stuffing, I'm not sure what you mean by stuffing, but it sounds like you have the maintaining issues of the practice. And it sounds like there's some, um, again, enthusiastic uh, event or the examples missing. It's, a, it's not to think so much about, in my view, you know, like connected to the other question that I have, you know, the, the psychological issues, the mental barriers that they have. And uh, if something is not doing right, we need to have a discussion, okay? There's an event of this happen, and it reflects that we're not doing this. Then gather people and discuss about it, and let everyone to contribute ideas, and for you to be the facilitator of it, because you are leading the organization, which is to collect the information, collect people's initiative, come up with a direction that you can agree upon. Your role is to do that. And if you cannot do it, well, well, that issue should be exposed. And if it's exposed, let's say in a business meeting and so forth, maybe it's performance uh, indicator or something like that, because at the end it has to be connected to the business result. So the purpose is not maintaining. Purpose is to achieve the mission satisfy the customers and accordingly do things, not the, for the sake of just maintaining the data. So certain maintaining of data may be totally um, nonsense, <laughs> if I say so, if that's a low priority item. And if it's a high priority item, you have to figure out the way to do it and you have to convince them, convince yourself, convince your bankers. Otherwise you have the quality problem, delivery problem, human resource problem, and others, you treat them everything, you don't have enough time to do everything. So you have to prioritize and figure out the passage. I guess that's part of the uh, solution for that. Okay, so we come to the next question. Maybe this, is, uh, this will be the last question, the first question and answer. Uh, it comes from Stefanos uh, Rante Tondok from OI. It's an American company. How to make this mini company arrange, arrangement relevant in new normal era when physical distancing is required? 
uh, it looks like we have to find other way to promote engagement in the shop floor. Okay. Usually, my answer is questioning back to the person. If you <laughs> go through the improvement by yourself, whether it's about the physical distancing or maintaining the data or whatever we discussed before that, there's a problem. <laughs> so it's nothing unique about the you know, COVID-19, about this social distancing. The business, you know, we are bound to have problem. Technology, new technology, and technology is taking out all the works. That's another problem. So it's not anything specific. We need to always figure out whatever problems comes in the way. So if I ever ask those specific questions, I tend to ask back, what do you think? And that's the beginning, I think, because if you are the guy to lead organization, if you give them all the answers to that, as much as you ask me to give the answer, it goes back to the spindle model of the organization I talked about. I don't know this, tell me what to do, okay? That doesn't satisfy me because I want you to figure out and I want us to share that experience. We want to have that platform to have fun or we have a platform to put ourselves to work together. You know, in, the, in these days, like a Facebook, they talk with the, like a QC circle, they call it the hackathon. <laughs> they put people into some setting and let them figure out under a certain time limit. You know, we need to be flexible to figure out, utilize, but not depending upon the answer from someone else. And that's part of the name of the game. As a mini company, you are the one to figure this out. And more you develop this, how do you call it, atmosphere, initiative, and willingness from people, you know, that's when you start to see interesting things happen. We can talk about those behavior change things in the next segment, but to me, the core of these things, whatever the project, uh, problem is, it goes back to us. It falls on us. I can talk more and more and more about my personal problems and how I struggled. And you may wake up in the middle of the night, but actually in the middle of the night, it's a good time to come up with an idea because your mind is calm and quiet and not so much noises on there. But, you know, that's the way that we can deal with the crisis and come up with our solution. And that the spirit and energy and the desire and willingness and being able to share those with others, that's the company, you know, organization, atmosphere, the environment, the platform you want to develop. Yes. Uh, I hope the questioner <laughs> is satisfied with his Kyo's <laughs> answer. I would like to ask Kyo to continue with the second session, this presentation, the second session. Please, Kyo. Okay. So here I have a slide that says Tenme, which is borrowed word from China. You know, in Japan, many things coming from China. This is one of them. Ten is heaven. Mei is order. So I call order from heaven. The point of this is the how to orient our work and life for a meaningful purpose. You know, connecting to the mission and the destiny. You know, we need to keep figuring this out. The so society, the world, the economy, everything is changing and the speed of the changing is happening. So how to find the destiny? That basically is what I faced. And one of the first points, maybe I, I can tell you a little bit, is about my meeting with Taichi Ono from Toyota. I had two special meetings, just one-to-one -one with them in the afternoon and twice I did it. That's just wonderful case. And toward the end of it, time runs out and I have to go home. And I didn't get the feeling that I have a blood belt. So that night, I dreamed of Ono. And in a dream, he was leaving me in the, like a cable car or train and waving his hand toward this direction, toward me. 
And I was left behind, and uh, I still remember it. But that was that moment that, you know, when I woke up and sweating, you know, what does that mean? And after five, ten minutes, I figured out. The message is this. You have to figure out on your own. You know, going through the experience and going through all of this and the ideas that we share, those are coming out of people, and there's some structure to it. But for example, if you cut down the setup time, you know, at the end, you have to do on your own. And to keep on practicing and maintaining the standard, you have to be there. You know, the ownership is very important. So if we have the ownership of any problem solving by the people, that's the organization we want. And the slide, let's move on to the next one, is to look at my life or the generic, you know, steps that I go through. There's a little story I have. I don't know if we have time, but uh, in, in Spain, I was helping the organization for like 20 years or more and visiting. And there are four partners in this organization, no, six of them. And they asked me to write something in Japanese. And I came up with those six points that you see it on the slide. One is the passion, challenge, beyond the conventional belief, awakening, tenme, happiness. I wrote this in Chinese character. At the moment, I didn't know what it meant because that was, those are the like, interesting words. And afterward, I came up that there's a sequence of this to happen. And Tenme is in there, the second from the bottom, order from heaven. That's when you find your destiny, you know, that kind of thing. But to me, everything starts with some kind of curiosity or energy that you have. Because if you don't have energy, you cannot break through. So you want to find what kind of energy you have or do you have it or not. So you seek for that and you want to live better. You know, that's the first thing. <laughs> you, know, you want to find something interesting that satisfies you. And that's the, the beginning of the passion in my view. So you start to challenge and you may succeed, but usually you hit the wall like a goldfish. Then what do you do? You know, you just stay there until you break through that. That can happen only when you go beyond the conventional belief. It's like in your brain, you search for a solution in a book and whatever you can find, ask the question, you try to get it. But the big problems is something that it's not that simple. It's kind of like a connecting the different references into a new way of looking at the situation that nobody had thought about. So, but that's the word actually, that's a Joseki is the word beyond the conventional belief I got from Ono. He gave me actually two of them. One is the challenge chosen. That was the one of the, uh, uh, what do you call that? The ink painting he gave. And the other one is that's Joski beyond conventional belief. And then comes the awakening moment, you know, after being the goldfish and can figure out, we may reach out this book and read in the web and this and that. Easy ones you can figure out, the difficult ones, you know, you can't. But if you stay with it, there's a moment of awakening. Just like the case of a dream of honor, I wanted to be satisfied. I wanted to get the answer from him. But the answer is that I have to find the answer within myself. <laughs> that was the awakening. That's very encouraging. Well, I don't have to depend on anything. I can self-manage it, right? I don't know if you agree with it, but that's the answer I took or came up on my own. And after, you know, a few minutes of sweating and thinking and wondering what's going in the middle of the night, I came up, I called the awakening, and then you have the order from heaven. You know, maybe you go through this fast steps back and forth, back and forth, and then eventually you figure out what to do. Like in the case of my coming to the States, United States, to figure out what I can do to help the people who are not utilized well. And if you can align what you do as if you have this order from heaven, that idea pops up and you're energized, want to do it, there's a customer, the potential there. Each mini company have the same situation. I, I believe so. And you go through that over and over, and then you become accustomed to the PDCA and the movement that you go through and including people and challenging and sharing and all that. 
then you feel great about accomplishing something because it's like a game. You know, if you play a game and share it and, you know, with a glass wall and ideas that you can share with the annual report or the suggestions or the pictures and smiling and all that, then we have some level of uh, alignment of our personal pursuit of happiness and that then connect to the company's happiness. Next, please. So in, this is the, I call it the behavior change model. At the end, what we face is to break through within ourselves. Okay, you can break through by changing the tools and outside environment and hiring consultant or whatever the case may be. You know, you can be educated. You need all of that probably, or I don't know. But the hard ones, you know, requires the change of your mind. Maybe this is the idea. You know, that's the mind thinking. Okay, well, maybe I'll start to think about this. And then your attitude may change. It may not change. The behavior starts to change. You start to act on trying and figuring out how to do it. And over time, if you are successful in doing it, the habit starts to change. The habit barrier, because we are born out of the dust of the universe and under the influence of whatever happened, and uh, you watch the parents, how they do, and you kind of emulate and, and figure out what they do, or why they are happy, and you just learn to behave in a certain way. But life is such that the situation is changing. Whatever you acquire in a child may not work all the way throughout your life. And then you may have to change the habit. And that's the difficult thing. But that's connected to the 10 minute discussion we went through, but that connects to the changing of the habit is opening up the possibilities and reaching out the new destiny. Next, please. So orchestration we talked about is for the company, but I see this same orchestration happening within each of us. <coughs> so instead of the mini company, I start to call it, it's, as it says, there's a mini meets. There are different meets within ourselves. One me is interested in the relationship, the other is on the hobby, the other is on the work, and the other maybe more on the money and financial, and the other is concerned about the health. So there are lots of mini me's within. And you are there to orchestrate in an orderly fashion. You know, going through the PDCA, you are the CEO at top banker. So this banker mini company situation is gonna work out in individual situation. And if you cannot orchestrate well, and if there's a barrier in between, it's like a lean, there's no flaw, and that makes it difficult to operate. So if you can do this well, your energy will be you know, exhausted in the right way to accomplish the mission. So you don't do everything. You just focus on what you need and then allocate your time and energy and manage your own life. Not because someone said so and so forth, you do it, but also why it's necessary to do that. You know, that kind of a situation. All right, let me check on the time. I still have still 15 minutes. Yeah, okay. So that's the idea that I, I start to talk about the mini company, but also we have the mini me. So what we want, you know, if you think the other direction, you know, the company is the company and there's a nation and the region and the world. So there's a connection, the world is changing and there's certain level of strain and difficulty and everybody has to be somewhat aligned so that the whole energy of what we do in the world makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, that's fine, right? Just like I found the gap in between the management and the people with this GE employee who laid off, you know, because of no, you know, good car coming out of it. You know, there, there's a gap that I identified. And then my desire of helping and the business need and potentially making my money out of it, you know, that made sense for me. So that's the jump I made. And, you know, that's just one example of trying to figure out the missing linkage. And every company does that. Amazon does it, Facebook does it. There are lots of technology companies do it. And if they are ahead of you, 
you get left behind. But you want to know what's going on. So you need to kind of figure out the dynamics of all this situation. But the way to get there is to figure out within whatever is in your control, right? Because it's too much to think about so many other things to see the world and the region and the Amazon or Facebook. You start from where you can and learn the way to manage from the mini company level. But to do that, we need to manage our own along with the idea of the Tenme and behavior change, habit change, and working with your mini meets inside. The concept is the same. We need to make the concept and approach the principle fairly simple. Then you can figure out what may be missing. If we have too many concepts running around, and for this part, I use this, you may have to do that. But ideally, related to your life, the mission, the desire, the approach, like a PDCA, you know, all that stuff, you want to have some simple approach that you can understand and relate to as much as you and other people working together. So everybody start to function, you know, right way or, you know, common way with the rhythm, the harmony and tone develop, then we can mesh those thing, things together just like the sport team is functioning together much better, even though they came from different parts of the world, for example. Let's move on. Am I on time? I still have. Okay, so as we move on, as I was talking about, we can share the progress among those mini companies. I use the term triangulation quite often these days. And this works within ourselves too. So let me spend some time on this. As I mentioned somewhere, more difficult problems requires uh, more energy to break through, but often the solution comes when you can put the ideas together from different disciplines. Because if you only do certain things, you're not flexible enough. Okay, you may have a hammer to hit the nail, but if it's the only tool that you have, then everything looks like a nail. But if the world is that simple, you know, Amazon doesn't exist. The Amazon came up with a unique idea of looking at the situation. There's lots of inventory wasted. There's lots of stupidity going on in terms, you know, everyone's carrying the inventory. Why don't we just shorten it by doing this and that? It's a wild idea, but they started that. So they are the example of this and that, and we can borrow from it in your own area. You have a little Amazon in your area, for example. You know, there may be a way to communicate in a very smooth manner, as an example. You know, develop another level of meeting to process the information so that you don't produce the paper. You know, so those examples would enrich your life. So if you look at your organization, or you being the whole company, you look at the whole organization, you need to have a platform to share the progress. Facebook is doing it, you know, in my view. So I thought that kind of fit the mini company idea. So I started to buy stocks. <laughs> it's another story by itself. But, uh, you know, if there's an environment that people can share idea, in this case, it can be shared in the wrong direction. But, you know, as a platform, you know, if you have a good platform to do something and create a platform to share things, and if that helps the people to exchange, that's what you can do. And the idea of that, you know, mini company or the annual report and glass or management and some of the things I talked about would be the tool or platform that you create. So, you know, there are some cases that I, well, not some, but most of the case, I tried to have the company to run the mini company open day. And in the shop floor management book, I mentioned that. And they can share the annual report but usually what I suggest is to be able to share those improvements. It's nice to have people set up a time. Let's say half a day, we have the mini company open day, the whole company may shut down. You know, it may have to be worked out in a different way, but if we can have half a day, for example, 
and the people may walk around different parts of the mini company. So each mini company has its own area where they have this glass wall, you know, there are cases of performance indicators and mini company missions and who they are and the skills and the examples of improvement, you know, things of that nature. And people come visit different area, you know, from the human resource to the production, to the R&D, to the sales, whatever. And other people may go the other direction, whatever. So that uh, this is the open day for like a show and tell. And then they move every 30 minutes to the next mini company. And the mini company president or some of those people, you know, in the area is left and explained. More they explain it and and if there may be customers and suppliers visiting there, so they get the stimulation. They say, why, why don't you work on this way? Or why this target is so low? Because I'm the one that is feeling a pain out of it. And the reason is this and this. And, you know, people may start to talk about it. I didn't think about it, but I thought, you know, you are okay with this. You know, whatever the case may be. So that the barrier that we have in organization, the solid silo, the silo idea of what we think, need to be diffused with the customer supplier kind of a horizontal reaction of what's going to be, what's happening. So you go to the R&D department. Often, you know, I may have difficult time let them get started. But my view is that it's a simple one. If it's important, make it visible. So I usually don't give the answer. So they struggle and they try this and that. I may come back and say, what about this? What about that? So over time, they may come up with, say, project, project list, who is doing what and what priority in the red and green, if the timing is right or wrong, so that the problem that they contain inside become visible for himself to orient himself. Because you don't want to put your energy into the area that is green, but you want to figure out what this red, which is seen as important, is red. And, you know, that's something you have to work on. Also, if it's there, other people walk, walking in that area can realize, or maybe other people from different departments can think, why did it spread? Because he should do this. You know, those things can happen and does happen. And I've gone through that if we have a way of sharing that. You know, what's important, make it visible. And people may say, I don't have time to do that. <laughs> You know, there's always the excuse. So I, I went through all the excuses, and that's why I don't want to answer those questions. That's your job. You have to figure out. You know, if it's important, if you cannot share it, how do you know that, you know, how you can convince others? You have to have some preparation if you are the owner of the business. And show me how you do it, you know, why you exist, what's your important area, what's the project, how important, if it works, then what happens? All those questions need to be answered. And as you start to answer more and more, and that's what the bankers should do if they are to lead the organization, they start to gain confidence in running and figuring out how to become the mini company president. Let's move on. I mentioned about organization and the individual, and mini-me, and mini-company. And the funny thing is that as much as I've been doing this for 35 years or something, you know, I don't do much anymore, but I still do, you know, work with a company, for example, in Brazil by the, you know, webinar or kind of a Skype session, whatever that is. Um, it becomes part of me, you know, PDCA, we organization, and there's still lots of room for improvement. But one of the idea, and this is really to Zen and awakening from the long you know, 10 days meditation, I had some interesting experience. And after that, I start to check this way. So this is a personal story, but I think there's a relationship to what we're talking about. Uh, I can think of two examples that quickly I can uh, share with you. This is a KPI of my life, you know, how my life is balanced. So on the left are six items. I call the six, and here maybe seven, but the, 
Living truthfully, sincerely, that's very important. So importance factor of 10, how I'm satisfied, nine, that's not bad. You can multiply it, maybe you don't need to. And another important factor may be work, hobby, health, relationship, or finance. And the, if, you know, I don't know why it's red for six and four there, but you know, the law doesn't mean bad. It just, if the finance is not important compared to the other things, it's okay if you can justify it. But the first is to estimate that and then how you're satisfied in it. And then for each of those roles, you can make a comment, you know, what went right and wrong and why, what can be done. So PDCA for each of them. And then you can summarize what happened in that period. It could be three months, six months, it doesn't matter. So you want to manage your life so that the energy is balanced because if work is important, but the health is bad, the relationship is bad, it's going to affect you. So you need to keep on managing your life. So human resource, I think, is important to know the personal growth and how they are to find a destiny in a company. But within each person, they have to figure out what to do. And the human resource people and the management may need to guide them because at the end, it's the health of the people. And if there's unbalanced, you have, someone has to pay the price. So that's one of the ideas I keep doing for the last 20 years. PDCA, PDCA, you know, little annual report or quarterly report, whatever that suits me. So you, you can see if it's going to work for you. The same concept in Glassboard, but your personal issue. So the next slides talk about the PDCA and uh, you have to keep moving. And in, in here, there's island as a target, but sometimes island, the target or the vision of what you want to do may change because the environment change. And accordingly, you may also change the direction of where you go. But that's nature. Nothing is permanent. It's all impermanence. Our habit is very resilient and they want to keep the way there's a momentum to it. But if there's a need for change, we just need to realize it and then have to figure out. Next slide, please. This is a slide about destiny and one of the participants in the seminar, this is perhaps 30, 25, 30 years ago. And I still use it. Um, there's a bird in the cage, and he's sitting there and questioning what's the destiny. And the reason for this is that this person, I think he was in Taiwan, maybe the automotive company. Um, after the seminar, he, he came and said, Professor Suzaki, I'm not the professor, but that's what he said. I feel like this drawing that I'm the bird in the cage, and I understand the idea of a mini company, and we need to find the destiny even in crisis. But I still feel like I'm the cage. I got the idea, but I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? That was the question. And my answer is, I don't know. What do you think? Right? It's not for me to tell you what to do. That's not your ownership. It's not easy. You know, everybody goes through that. I have gone through it, not just one second, time, and just recently I'm going through right now. Because of the coronavirus, I'm applying the visa and there's a mail delay and, uh, you know, all the bureaucracy and all the nonsense. And, but, you know, let's have a good spirit. And, and what I learned from meditation and Zen is that when you have a difficulty, one thing you don't want to lose is the calm and quiet mind. You know, the mind can jump and down and, you know, in the trouble, but let's see what we can do. Because we are capable, and why we are capable? Because we came out of the dust of the universe, and something is happening to help us to be like this. It's a miracle. That's the life energy coming from inside. And we may be able to tap on that one if we are just being quiet and not jumping around. Because if you jump around, you get caught up in the idea. 
but you have to go beyond those silos and references. And you may need to bring in more references, ideas, and then share that with others. And along with it, you will find the destiny. And the confidence and the smiling face and the happiness to share it and each breakthrough. And that makes me feel vibrant. And more you have it, you gain more confidence. Okay, there's another problem here, but okay. One thing I noticed is that, uh, you know, this is an interesting case that it used to take longer time to figure out to go through the break, you know, to the, to the wall that is preventing me to go through. It becomes shorter and shorter. Maybe that's still questionable. But for example, I had the case of me diagnosed as a pre-diabetic. And I thought that was horrible. You know, I spent like a, one day and a half to figure out what's going on and then realize that if you have to change the habit of eating, 80% of the supermarket, I shouldn't go. And then doctor is saying that I have to kind of click the finger to get the blood and monitor it every day. And I didn't want to do it. So I read everything I can find on the internet in that day and a half, and I figured out what to do, which is to change my way of living, you know, eating habit and everything. And I thought, well, I can do it. It's kind of like a monk life, but it sounds doable, you know. Of course you can take pills and so forth, but I didn't, and I figured out, and I don't have any problem now. The funny thing is after three months of changing the habit, my blood pressure, which was high for the last previous 15, 20 years, went down to normal. <laughs> so, you know, in this case, it's, I found, you know, healthy destiny. The other point I just quickly want to say is that I have this uh, blood dot exercise. If there's a problem in a day, emotionally upset or so forth, I put the blood dot on my daily you know, the, the journal of, of, of like, a, you know, see how, how I'm doing. I mean, still do meditate five minutes or 10 minutes and then see, I once try to figure out if there's the correlation of the meditation and the black dot. So I call it the black dot exercise. It's like a control chart of what I'm doing. And then all this seems to be indicating that, the, you know, once you start to, get to know you, the habitual pattern, what it takes to break through. It's not easy. I'm still figuring out, but figuring out process itself may become interesting. Okay, next slide, please. All right, I'm running out. So let's read this quickly. Need to be customer driven. Have to have the ownership, leadership. She had a comprehensible discipline address the needs of the people and so forth, but spirit, time, will, desire, put some of those into it. And there are different ways to execute the idea of the mini company. You know, you can start from the top or middle, it all depends. Next slide. So human, is at the center of what we do. The heart is at the center, but you need to use the brain and listen to your heart and live with your mission. That's what I said in the results from the heart book. And even Dalai Lama gave me the forward for that book. Discuss the talent within. Everybody is different, but try to figure out and do what we genuinely like to do. We have to search for that because that's where you tap the energy within. And if that helps others, then you go through this idea of the tenme. And keep finding ways to express what we can, but also have this mental discipline. And things get difficult, but you still maintain calm and quiet mind. All right. And hope you find the destiny in the next slide. The ending part is happy sailing, happy journey for you. Okay, I'm over a little bit, but Sony, if you can share with me any question, I'll be happy to answer. 
thank you, Gio. Uh, we have so many questions, but we have to pick some of the questions. The first we have picked is from Muhammad Ritvansha from Sirat. Uh, he is asking in the slide orchestration, could you elaborate more what is the relationship of PDCA cycle at the triangle with the business and mini company? Triangle with the business and oh, not it's a bank or a mini company perhaps. In that tri in the picture, yes. I think I showed you the B and MC. And B means the banker yes. and MC is the mini company. Like I said, hierarchically yes. at the top, maybe the CEO being the banker, and then the reporting people, the mini company. And the mini company people itself mm -hmm. become the banker for the next level, which is like a mini, mini company. So that's the relationship. Okay. Hmm. The next question is from pa Albertus Kurniawan Joyo Pranoto from Multicon is a construction company, I suppose. Uh, Mr. Suzaki, uh, we have a little problem during translation. Our company objective to a specific action plan in our working unit. This problem are creating our hesitation that the action plan are contributing to our company objective or not. And also we became unsure about the achievement that achievement data given from our working unit are reliable or not. Please advise. I, actually I'm not there quite are sure. Some doubt. I can follow the yes, question. The first question Yes, uh, may I repeat? Uh, Maybe you can just summarize question. the key point of the question. Yeah, Don't read the question, but just tell me what is the point of the question. Okay, they, they are translating the company objective to a specific action plan within the working unit. Right. Yeah. The problem they found is a hesitation regarding the action plan, whether it will contribute to our company objective or not. That was the first part. Well, but let's go slowly. Even that one is difficult. The way I look at it is, is this, that the PDCA is a cycle continuously going through. You go through not just once, second time, the third time. So if the first time is difficult, that's fine because all you think is whatever you could at the time. But if you go through PDCA cycle, then you start to listen why it didn't go right. So there's a moment of reflection and the lessons learned and then expose the problem. That was part of the slide. And then go to the next cycle. So it's like a, riding a bicycle. At the beginning, the, the bicycle is very, you know, moving around. But as you go second, third time, then you start to learn and people can work together better. So I think that's the pragmatic way of looking at it, as opposed to, I mean, it, it may go through that difficulty, but you know, so far as you have this process of continuously trying over time, it's like anything, you know, all the sports, you cannot just do one thing and figure out that you have to keep on. So the repetition is the mother of success if you do the right thing. Yes. Uh, the second part is uh, they are unsure uh, the achievement, whether the achievement data from the working unit are reliable or not. So that, okay. there is some doubt about that. Right, right, right. I, I know those things happen. Um, but you need to be pragmatic. For example, the, there's an issue about the cost. You know, the, the, the accountant may say it this way, but the people at the shop floor may not be able to relate to that. If so, you may need to pick up some measurement that seem to be representative of the problem. And therefore, you have more confidence in what you're doing. So if the data source is difficult to assess, 
you know, you have to go through that kind of a thinking. Yes, the next question is from uh, Irvan, Irvan from Ruchika, also uh, our sponsor. You said that achieving the goals of mini company is the end goal, rather than just put the data on board. If the mini company is on the shop floor area, do you think we should align to their individual KPI, we should align their individual KPI to the many company goals on the operator level. Uh, if I'm the operator, I'm not sure if I understood the question, but I want to see how I'm contributing because you want to see the impact to the world or the customers and the importance of it. Otherwise you become a tool without knowing which way to go. So it's a banker mini company relationship at the operator level. So the supervisor, whoever is in, the, in charge of explaining that, what's the reason of what they do, you know? So I, I'm not quite sure if I can answer the question, but to say it's the same as in other mini companies all the way down to the shop floor. Can I add one more thing before we may start to come to the end of it. One thing I didn't share. Yes. When I was asked to the webinar, I had the question, you know, how can I do it? The way I see is just like the discussion of PDCA. Once you get the idea, you may do it, but you need to revisit, you know, what went right and wrong and what lessons you have learned, what problem you still exist and go to the next level. You know, the PDCA goes everywhere, whether it's the life, life profile or the black dot you know, or the KPI, the annual report, everything is like a, you know, continuous cycle of movement. So when I was asked to do this, one idea I shared from the beginning is that just one shot seminar is not gonna do it. It just may stimulate some people, but it may not get the movement. And that's my experience. So what I suggested, and I'm just saying that the same thing right now, is that I want you to see if you can come up with a users group. Perhaps you can come up with a users group of the mini company within your company, so that the, not everyone, you know, those who are interested may start to form the mini company, start to work on it and compare notes and share things with each other. So you can do it within the company but also across different industries. So many, you know, even not in the States, but in Europe and others, I created the users group. So one of the idea I want you to think about is, and maybe this is where PQM people may be able to help. If you can have some kind of a users group across, let's say six companies or eight companies, you know, how you can achieve that, I don't know, but it, what is most interesting in the process is not understanding the concept, you know, because it's not, it, it's like a swimming, you know, you just don't understand the concept of swimming and be able to swim. So you have to experience it and let you figure out and each may figure out, but that's not good enough because you want to spread the idea across. That's when you get the power and interest. So I suggest if you are interested in this, and maybe with the PQM's help, create a users group. And uh, it's possible that I can come up every three months or six months to see what's going on. And by that time, you have another set of questions. Hopefully not the same question, <laughs> okay? But, but the idea is, for me, it's just a catalyst to share and energize to get the thing rolling PDCA, PDCA, PDCA. If you do this three, four times, you get better at it and you can tackle more difficult problems. So you need to strategize how to do it. Also share ways so that you can stimulate with each other. So if you have different companies working together, ideally you can visit with each other. But right now the situation is not that easy. But at least in a, some form that 
if we can be creative, you have those sharing rally or the open day I talked about, about the progression and then discuss what happened. So let's use an example. Every three months, if they are the six company or eight company, you know, every three months they share their progress. Every three months they focus on certain project or ideas and share that and continue that over time. Then I think you may develop by actually doing, learning can take place. And you may challenge more difficult ones and this movement can spread out within the company or across the industries. Okay. Thank you, Kyo. Uh, thank you very much for sharing with all of us. Please help me to give uh, applause, big applause for him. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> so in the future, we would like also to form a community with using uh, WhatsApp group. So please show the... WhatsApp group? Yes. Uh, if you are interested to become part of the community, we, I, I might call it a mini company community. And then out of the mini company community, hopefully uh, there are some uh, users group, which is uh, Susaki-san just mentioned about that. Uh, so please register through the link uh, in front of you in the slides or scan the QR code uh, in front of you. Uh, within this community, we can, we can share and discuss your experiencing in implementing Susaki's idea, especially related to the mini company. So after this webinar, we might also organize another webinars where you can present your successes. So if you think that you can, you want to share your positive ex experiences, please contact us. Another thing is also that uh, you need to fill the, you need to fill the uh, feedback to improve our future webinars, please fill the polling form uh, in, the, in your screen. It will take about maybe two minutes. I will wait at, uh, around two minutes before we officially close the webinar. So two minutes is over now. I will uh, continue with uh, the, the formal closing if you wish. If you wish to have the presentation material, 
please visit our website as shown in the slide in front of you or access the link in the chat room yeah so you if you open the chat room there is a link uh, of our web website and from our website you might also download uh, our three monthly magazine called improve where we will have an article also regarding the uh, webinar related to webinar this time so once again to our sponsors PT Wahana Duta Jaya Ruchika and Danon Spe Specialized Nutrition what, uh, we thank you very much for making this webinar become reality Last not least, we thank you all of you for participating in our webinar today. See you in our next events. Bye-bye.